So as a lot of my viewers know, BigBattery.com takes used battery modules from various industries. They put it into a box with wheels. They add a battery management system, a voltage meter, and also a circuit breaker. So this is a ready-built battery, and you can configure these in series and parallel to make a large solar power system. And they work pretty well. For people that want to use used batteries and they do not have experience with battery management systems, this is probably the cheapest plug and play option available. And today we're going to do a quick comparison of the 24 volt battery, which is lithium iron phosphate, to their new 48 volt battery, which is NMC or nickel magnesium cobalt oxide. And these are very different batteries with very different characteristics. So we're going to run over some of the different features. And then we're going to connect the 48 volt model to an LV5048 inverter. And we're going to do a capacity test and test out some of the features and make sure that it actually works as advertised. And in my solar shed, I've actually used this one for a few months, as you guys have seen in my videos. And it's worked flawlessly. There has never been a single moment where it was not working. So, so far, this one's really good. And 48 volt batteries are ideal for off grid solar power systems, but you can also take this one and put it into series to have a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So let's talk about the differences because these are very, very different. So first let's compare the size and the weight for the capacity. Clearly the battery on the left is wider and it is taller and it's also heavier than the one on the right. But get this, the battery on the left has a smaller capacity. It has three kilowatt hours and then the one on the right has 3.8 kilowatt hours. So if size and weight and space are a consideration for you, then the one on the right is obviously the clear winner. The next difference is the chemistry. So on the left we have lithium iron phosphate and on the right we have NMC. The one on the left will last much longer but we do not have any data on degradation for used batteries. These have been cycled to 60 to 80 percent of their capacity on average so it's hard for me to say how long either one will last for. I know that the DIY Powerwall community has been using NMC cells such as the ones that are in the battery on the right for a very long time but there's no one out there that has data on how long these will last for. Now the next thing that consider is what chemistry you plan to build your solar power system with. If you already have lead acid or lithium iron phosphate batteries, you cannot and you should not add a NMC battery pack. I've actually experimented personally on this quite a bit with lithium iron phosphate, lithium titanate, and because of the charge and discharge characteristics or the state of charge is different at different voltages, even though the nominal voltage is slightly similar, you're going to run into problems. You will have performance problems, you have longevity problems. So lithium iron phosphate cannot be connected in parallel to an NMC battery. So these batteries have very different applications. If size and weight are an issue, then you should go with this one. If you want longevity, you should go with this one. Now let's build a 48 volt solar power system. And this is the MPP LV5048. This is a massive five kilowatt inverter with an MPPT and a huge AC charger. And so to connect this to our battery, we need to make our own adapter. So this is a 50 amp Anderson connector. We have some marine grade six gauge wire and we have some copper lugs. So the next step is connecting the battery to the inverter, but we need to talk about a very crucial step. We need to charge up the inverter's capacitors. If you were to connect this battery directly to this inverter, it can either damage the BMS or put it into safety mode. So to prevent this, we're gonna charge up the capacitors with a small resistor. So step one is connect the positive conductor to the inverter. And now we can connect the Anderson connector to the battery. Now for the final step, you need to be very careful and use safety glasses. We're gonna charge up the capacitors. So what that means is we take a 30 ohm resistor, connect it to the negative conductor, and we just simply wanna to touch it on the negative terminal of the inverter so that it can charge up the capacitors. So all we have to do is touch it, and now the capacitors are charged. Now I'm gonna remove the resistor and attach it directly to the inverter. And you'll notice there was no spark. Now the battery is connected to the inverter and we can tighten these nuts down. And then use an insulated wrench to tighten down these terminals. Now that the battery is safely connected to the inverter, we can actually turn it on. 
And if it stays on, that means that you charge up the capacitors properly and the BMS is not in safety mode. So now we can actually attach loads and chargers and use this all in one system. So the first thing we need to do is charge it and I do not have enough solar power because it's late at night. So to charge this quickly, we're gonna take the AC input, the three conductors and connect it to one of my inverters in the solar shed and let it charge up. And now we have an extension cord connected to the AC input and it's connected to the solar shed. And right now we have an AC input and it's not charging the battery. So I need to read the manual and figure out what setting I need to change. And I also need to change the absorption or the max voltage that we need to charge this battery to. Big battery recommends charging up to 58 volts. So I'm gonna set the absorption to 58 and then the float to like 57. And that should work great. You need to hold down the enter button and you'll have 38 options that you can change. You can also change this so you can work as split phase, put them in parallel, three phase. So I recommend everybody read the manual to understand every setting. There's no way that I can fit this all into a video and if I did it would take about an hour. But for this video we just need to change the charge profile settings. And to set the absorption make sure setting number five is on user and then press enter and then go down to setting 26. Number 26 is the charge voltage or the absorption. So we want to set this to 58. Now that the charging voltage is set to 58 volts, we can press the down button and go to float. Let's press enter and go up to 57 volts and then press enter and you are good to go. And I've changed the settings and it's still not charging. So I have the manual and I'm gonna go through every setting and make sure that everything's right. Another setting is the low voltage cutoff point. It's setting number 29. So if you look at the data sheet, it says that the maximum discharge voltage is 41 volts. So I'd, I would set this to 41.5 or 42 volts just to be on the safe side so that this will cut off the loads before the BMS does. Also, you want to disable the equalization. That can be done by taking the equalization time to zero. I can't do that. There's only five minutes. So what I am going to do instead is change the equalization voltage to 58 volts and then set the equalization time to five minutes. And it's still not charging. I think it's because it needs a split phase input and I don't have that. I just figured out why it's not charging. You need to bridge L1 and L2 on the input. So yeah, I just found it on the schematic on the manual. So be sure to read the manual. So yeah, I'm gonna get a jumper wire and then make that work. Now I have a conductor from L1 to L2, so it should work. It's charging, look at that, oh my gosh. So right now it's charging off of my Titan solar generator. Now we're gonna use a clamp meter to see how much current is going into this battery. We have almost 30 amps at 48 volts. So this will charge up pretty quickly. This will charge in about two and a half hours. So this battery is fully charged and I tested the high voltage disconnect on the battery's VMS. I charged it to 58.2 volts and it disconnected at 58 volts. So now we're gonna do the capacity test. This is the kilowatt counter meter that we're gonna use. I just reset it. This is the AC output of the LV5048. And this is the Titan AC charger. So I'm gonna come back in like five hours and we'll see what our results are. And this load is pulling 12.6 amps at the battery. The battery is dead and the BMS is in safety mode, so I can't turn the inverter on. But this has a memory, so we're gonna plug it into my Titan solar generator and see what the capacity results of that test were. And we got 3.19 kilowatt hours. So we're gonna take this number and divide it by the inverter efficiency. And so the final result is 3,987 watt hours and it is rated at 3.8. So it did pass this test and this number, this final capacity result is what you wanna use when calculating the C rate. On a used battery, this battery is actually maybe like a five or a six kilowatt hour battery. But because it's used, you wanna calculate the C rate for charge and discharge with this number instead. For example, if you wanna pull one C from this battery safely, which is recommended for this chemistry, you do not want to push anything more than 3,987. And even though this battery can theoretically pull 3,800 watts, it is limited to 3,000 watts because it has a 63 amp circuit breaker. And if you multiply that by 48, you get 3,024. So 3,000 watt inverter can be directly connected to this. If you want to run the LV5048, you're going to have to put two of these into parallel, and then you can actually run this at max load. 
Now this BMS is in safety mode and if you test the voltage at the output terminals, we have 2.2 volts, so we need to get it out of safety mode. If I just disconnect the battery and plug it back in, it will trip the OCPD and it will do nothing. And guess what? Let's test the voltage and see if that fixed it. And it's still at two volts. What we're gonna have to do is use a charger or I can short out the leads on the BMS. And I can just unscrew this right here and it's probably easier than me getting a charger, so we're gonna do it that way. And if you have a Victron inverter, they can actually get these BMSs out of safety mode. But with MPP, I can't seem to do it. I plugged it in and it won't turn on. So yeah, we're just gonna do it manually. This BMS is so tiny. When you work with higher voltages, you don't need to work with nearly as much current. Uh-oh, look at this, guys. I do not like this craftsmanship. There are wire strands exposed. This is not ideal. They need to fix this. I'm going to send this directly to the CEO because this is not acceptable at all. Also, look at this solder joint. That doesn't look good. I mean, it got to the right temperature, but they could have done a better job. The one on this side looks a lot better. Let's see how strong it is. Okay, it's not coming off. I just think it could be a little bit more pretty. And usually they do a good job, but I really do not like this. I'm going to make sure that this is fixed on anything that's shipped out from them. You guys need to always inspect your batteries when you buy them because this stuff happens and this is so unfortunate. And this is the lithium iron phosphate model, but look at how the circuit breaker is attached. This is proper. All the wire strands are connected to a crimped lug and it is a professional install. I mean, this one's perfect. Everything on here looks great. And I don't see why they can't just copy this design. This is really nice. Now we're gonna get this out of safety mode by shorting B negative and P negative. I forgot the inverter was attached. I should have done that with a resistor. Oh, I'm such an idiot. So for whatever reason, I could not get it out of safety mode until I pulled the balance plug and then plugged it back in. And now we have voltage. But yeah, charging it and then shorting out P negative and B negative did not do anything. So yeah, just so you know, just pull out this balance plug and then plug it back in and you're good. Now we're gonna charge up the capacitors. All right, now it should work just fine. We have 44 volts, now we can charge it. And it actually turned on, so we're good to go. And the screen shows that it's actually charging without any error codes. We have 30 amps going into the battery, so it should be good to go now. I just figured out why this wire is like this. This is the original wire from the BMW pack. Technically, it's okay to do this, but it's just not ideal. It's not as pretty as that battery. But everything else looks pretty good. And yanking on this solder joint, this is up to the proper temperature. So yeah, this is the only thing I dislike about this. So technically the system passed our test, but I am really disappointed about the circuit breaker. But yeah, at least you guys actually know how to use the LV5048. And if you buy one of these, you know how to reset the BMS if it goes into safety mode. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.